Welcome to Sparks Nevada, uh, site of the Tesla Gigafactory and our Tesla Semi Truck uh, Factory as well. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years. Um, so, we, we, we unveiled the Tesla Semi uh, five years ago. Um, it's been a lot that's happened since then, to say the least. Um, so, we were incredibly excited tonight to actually deliver our first production Tesla Semi Trucks. <laughs> So I wonder why build a semi-truck? Because um, if you look at the actual unit volume, it's, it's small compared to passenger vehicles. So for passenger vehicles, you know, there's on the order of uh, almost 100 million that are sold every year. And whereas uh, tr you know, semi-trucks, it's uh, like you know, four, four or 500,000. Not even, yeah, it's a couple hundred thousand Class A trucks a year. Globally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, 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 sorry, that's US, US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, so there's, it, in the, so in the U.S., there's it's called it like 15 million passenger vehicles and a couple hundred thousand semi trucks. So it seems like a small percentage, but uh, it's actually 20 percent of U.S. vehicle emissions because you, you've got a huge vehicle and it's being driven uh, all the time. So when you factor in the, the number of hours driven and the, the weight that it's carrying, it's actually although it's only one percent of vehicle production, it's 20 percent of vehicle emissions. Uh, and it's uh, over a third of, of all the particulate emissions. So from a sort of health standpoint, particularly in like cities, this is a huge uh, impact, like it's gigantic. Been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. And the other thing is that we're going to take these and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to put these on into our own fleet, into our own supply chain. And we're going to use this to transport goods between our factories and our suppliers because we believe in it, not just from a mission perspective and a cost perspective, but because we want to close that feedback loop. We've got to get that learning as fast as we can. We want it straight from the drivers. We want it straight from the service techs that are working on it. We're going to take all that data that's coming. Uh, uh, carbon over wrap sleeve. So essentially we're using the, 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 the Plaid uh, Model S, Model X uh, powertrain. Uh, and, um, but it, we're, we're and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, yeah. So the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with the tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on a highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, really cool happening all behind the scenes. And at 82, that, that's weighing 82,000 pounds, and when you see that pass shot again, You'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. Rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runaway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. But yeah, standard trip. Down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station. This is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time, both you know, virtually, but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen. And really some next level engineering to, uh, of everything they had to do there. And you know, it means that we've got a really efficient truck. Uh, like, with basically no training, you can drive this. Um, you know, you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> a sustainable energy infrastructure. 
So you've got to have all, all aspects of the, of the energy question answered, uh, sustainable power generation, uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support. <laughs> um, and and uh, geothermal and many others, but things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we uh, you, you, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy. So when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy, and you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Sure, they're going to be able to charge them and keep their fleet running, and even the amount of power outage, and that's one of the things that we can do with the mega pack on site as well. All right, so um, yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's, it's been a long, five, long journey, long f five years, uh, but uh, th this is going to really revolutionize the roads and I think ma make the world a better place in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so thank you for your support uh, through all the years.